Hello YouTube, today we are doing something that apparently there are quite a few videos on in the year 2020 that I did not realize, but I am going to be flash modding this beautiful iPod mini. Uh, ooh, wrong one, this is my first gen. We're going to be modding the second gen. This is originally a four gigabyte as you can see here, assuming it wants to focus. Um, yeah, four gig, it's a CF card. It's a moving part, it's basically a hard drive. It's old, it's a little slow. Um, it's not as reliable. Um, this one's basically on its last leg. You can kind of throw it around. It'll decide to die out. So there is a beautiful company out there called iFlash. They sell this CF to um, SD card adapter. And then of course you can adapt the SD card over to the micro SD card. And I picked this up, 128 gig micro SD card for 13 bucks on sale at Walmart. So that's a smoking deal. Normally, you, at least right now, you can pick it up for 20 bucks on Amazon for a 128. So we're gonna put a butt ton of storage in this thing. And not only that, I have right here a brand new 750 milliamp iPod mini battery. But regardless, I know, oops, I know this battery will need to be replaced. So we're just gonna take care of all that while we're in there, get it formatted up and running, and uh, we'll be good to go. So this is a little tutorial kind of watch for fun video of how you um, flash a mod an iPod mini in 2020. This is the iPod mini. You want to unlock it uh, if you're gonna test it. Thanks, Focus, I love you. And surprise, it turns on. I have charged it up and uh, hopefully it turns on. Beautiful. Hold this guy here, boom, look at that backlight. It's so nice. Settings, about, and I am rocking a whopping four gigs, 3.7 capacity. And I only have 39 songs on and I'm down 0.2 gigs. So we're gonna have a stupid amount of space after we're done modding this thing and hopefully a little bit better battery life. So um, to get started, preferably you would want to heat this bottom panel here and the top panel here, but um, I am lazy and I'm going to try to see if I can get it off without heating it. Um, so you, if you have one of these, um, you can use one of those. If you have a razor blade, honestly, that'll work just fine. So this top panel we're gonna take off and this bottom panel we're gonna take off. Um, let's just start with the bottom. I think this might be a little, yeah, this is a little thick. So we are gonna start off with our razor blade here. Just try to get in the gap. So we're already in there. You don't need to go that deep. You barely have to go in there at all. And we're just gonna pry this cover off. You can kind of hear the adhesive coming away. Um, I'm gonna slide down here. Oh. Okay, got it up a little bit right here. And you can see there's a clip more or less right there. All right, some more, boom. Good enough, I don't know, maybe. I don't wanna break a clip, so we're gonna kinda pry it over here some more. All right, that adhesive is really holding it on. Wow, that's the best adhesive I've seen in a while. So um, I'm gonna set that aside. I don't know if it matters which way it goes back in. Um, I'm just going to lay it down like this. Um, there are no screws, surprisingly. So you have these kind of, I wanna call it a clip, but not quite. We will come back to this in a little bit. We're going to um, undo this top panel here, kind of the same method. Just don't try not to dig in as far because you do have that lock switch, which is kind of important. All right, we got it lifted up a little bit. Okay, I think it's been a while since I've done this. I think the headphone um, kind of port is supposed to stay there. Yeah, so like it's coming up, it's, it's moving. This is so ballsy. Yeah, I'll add it some more. Did I do it? We did it. Did we break any clips? I do not think so. And you are gonna get a really tiny Phillips for the screw here and the screw here. Um, that way we can slide the shell out. So grab one of those if you don't have one already. And let's take this out. And two, awesome. And now we are going to figure this clip mechanism out here. So I have a 
super tiny flat head. Um, I believe this should get the job done. So from what I recall, I think you go under here and there's a little bit of a lip that it's chilling on. So you gotta kinda push it up and raise it over that lip. Same over here. Okay, I don't know if it's gonna sound that dramatic when you do it, but I got that raised over. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. Being careful because the connector for that click wheel is chilling right there. So I'm not gonna go too deep. Come on. There we go. Wow. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is disconnect this cable that goes to the click wheel. If you don't, you might tear it and it'll be a little bit of a pain to replace that. So if you have a long fingernail like me, you can kind of just uh, pry it up, I believe. They really got that in there solid. Okay, connector's undone. Boom, didn't kill it. And it should just slide up and out now. So just kind of here where the 30 pin connector is, push up and it'll slide right out of the shell just like that. Take your time, I'd rather you know, you do it slow than rip anything or jack it up. So this will come completely out of the shell. We have the empty shell here with a click wheel still attached set up there. Um, and you can see your connector that you left behind. So now we have the motherboard, the uh, LCD display, the old battery and the four gig micro drive. So these are the two parts we're gonna upgrade and uh, we're gonna focus on this. First thing you wanna do, as always with any electronics you're working on, is disconnect this battery. And uh, we've got the new one here that we will install in a sec. So got the connector. You wanna try to, instead of grabbing it by this cable, if possible, kind of lift it up um, on the connector portion here, just so you don't tear it. Not that it's the end of the world if you're replacing the battery already, but um, it's just a good practice. There we go. Okay, so it's just connected. Um, so just, you know, lift it up, a little bit of pressure right here, and it'll lift right up. This is the old battery. For some reason, it's kind of stuck down. All right, old battery's out. It is not bloated, which is awesome. So um, it's not really anything I have to worry about. I'm gonna swap this out before I put the new battery in. Um, but just kind of remember the connectors up here. That's how your battery goes in set that aside um, I have heard these connectors right here to the drive can be pretty fragile. So um, Just be careful when you do that um, But we're gonna try to lift this up and take this tape off so we can get this connector disconnected and then hook this guy up I don't know exactly where to start kind of like a Christmas present So I'm just gonna like find something that's lifted. There we go they do tape over the connector so that's why we have to take this off here there we go boom and boom okay so we got the tape off on one side don't really need that for anything you can see i can now um oop, maybe you can see right there i have access to the connector now this rubber i don't really need so i can take this off um, i'm just going to leave this here on the bottom and we'll take the tape off on the other side and then get access to this connector so we can swap it out. I guess just try to figure out the easiest way to disconnect this without damaging it. I'm gonna try just kind of pulling it out. So right here you wanna see go lower and these pins will kind of start coming out. Um, there we go, boom, boom. So there is the four gig micro drive, don't need this. Um, I'll just save it for the heck of it. And then we have this adapter. Um, so I'm gonna cut this guy open, prep the card, put it in, um, and then install that CF card. And open this guy. Boom. So we got the card, we got the 128. I'm gonna pop that in there. Make sure it's not locked. Assuming that is, there's no lock icon, so whatever. Um, we're going to put this in the iFlash CF adapter here. So we have a card in a card in a card in an iPod. A lot of adapters, but this is one of the best methods. There's a bunch of really crappy, weird um, CF adapters. This one feels super sturdy, legit. Um, SanDisk, SanDisk is a great SD card brand, so I don't have any doubts we're gonna have problems with this, but um, gonna get this connected. I don't actually know if it matters which way this goes in. 
I'm just gonna assume it's gonna sit like that. Just kind of connect it in, make sure it's all lined up before you smash it in there. Um, I'd say just put some light pressure evenly um, so I can see it's all even there. So there's that, that looks super clean, minimal. Uh, I'm gonna open up this new battery and put that in there. Maybe, uh, okay, that was not graceful at all. The new battery is here, it uh, seems legit. I've asked some people on the iPod subreddit, they recommended this, so I'm gonna assume it's good. This is a problem with new batteries, they don't always fit in as well, so I'm gonna kind of pre-bend the cable a little bit. I don't wanna abuse it and bust the thing up, but obviously it's only gonna go in one way. Don't freaking force it if you have it upside down. Going to plug this in. Boom, that was way too easy. And uh, kind of bend it all retarded a little bit. Just shove it in there. Pretend we're good, and we'll just, I don't know, slide it into the shell. This is where the problem is gonna be with this being raised beyond the uh, casing a little bit. So we're gonna have to bend it a little bit and figure something out. Gonna make sure there's no crap on this screen. It looks fine. Okay, let's try to slide this in. There's kind of a groove in here. You'll you'll just know. It, it won't feel right if you're sliding it in all stupid. So this is where you wanna take your time. Keep the battery pushed up against the motherboard. Keep sliding it in. Oh gosh, this doesn't feel right. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it's going. Just a little firm with the battery, I swear. That's all it is. Okay, so we're gonna watch the connector. Okay, all right. Connector's fine, I swear. Oh, okay. We snapped it back in. We're all good. So I'm gonna connect this click wheel back. Ugh. Okay, we just pushed it back up. So if you do that, just push it back down into place. Connect that while you hold it. Sweet, we're all good. So I'm gonna test this out, format it, make sure it's good before I put these panels back on. But I'm going to unlock it here and press here. We should get something beautiful like that. Okay, we are back. I have watched at least one YouTube video and it appears I more than likely plugged in the adapter backwards. Now we know, now you know. Slide this boy out. Oh gosh, it's still hard even with that click wheel disconnected. Oh, wow, okay, well that's awesome. Pull that boy out, okay. And we're gonna flip this guy over and hope that fixes all of our problems. Okay and flip it over and then hope that we'll solve our problems. Connector, oh my gosh, it's booting, please don't boot. Uh, we're just gonna wait for it to show stuff. That, that doesn't look promising either. All right, so we have good news and we have bad news. The good news is, there is no good news. Um, nobody has a tutorial on YouTube. Oh gosh, go back in. Of them using an iFlash adapter. Um, so I honestly have no freaking clue which way this goes in. I really have no clue. There's like two ways this can go in, right? I don't know. Blowing the connectors, is this a Game Boy game? Just work. Yeah, boy! We gotta figure it out. Oh my gosh, okay. This is gonna look like trash. It is detected. We are going to restore it. Oh, there we go, we got the loading screen. Yup, you see that? We're in, boys. We got it, I don't know if you can see that. Admin's iPod, we even got the 128 gig little engraving thing there. Okay, all right, so we're going to, uh... oh gosh, nicely put this back. There we go. Make sure the screen's somewhat clean. The battery's sitting nicely. The CF adapter's chilling. It doesn't look like the click wheel should be interfering, but it may be. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Uh, we got it. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh no. Okay, this was literally just rolling up. It was not what we wanted. Please go in there nicely. I don't know, crease it over or something. Uh. 
Uh. Okay, click wheels connected. We'll test it again. Please don't have any issues. Yes. Okay, we are in. And we are going to go under settings. About. We have a whopping 118 gigs available. This thing is snappy loading menus. Holy smokes, I'll have to put some music on here. But that is nice. Put it in here. And we'll put this back on. Ooh. Cool. That works. And put it back to sleep. And put this bottom piece back on. And I guess you just kind of get one side and push it in. No. Okay, so you gotta get your flat head again. Oh my gosh, okay. We got it in. It doesn't matter if you beat up your case on the inside, no one's gonna look except for you or the next person who opens it. Um, this one, be very careful. Like I said earlier, snapping it back in. You got your uh, click wheel cable. Okay, I hope that was careful enough. It was snapped in. Click wheel, are you okay? Yes. Okay, and snap your cover back on. Eh, eh. Uh, okay, there we go. It is flush. Holy crap. Um, assuming you put this thing together right and you follow some of the tips, honestly, it's not that hard of a project. It is not that involved. It's pretty easy to remove some tape off of an old drive, slowly disconnect it, put this in. The iPod itself, I picked up pretty cheap. I think this was like under 15 bucks. Um, normally you're gonna find these around 30 bucks on eBay secondhand in various conditions. This one has a little bit of scuffs right here, um, but I have quite a few minis. I have this mini, I have my first gen mini you can tell it's a first gen because there's no gig engraving there. Um, I'm gonna try to flash mob this next. Hopefully that goes okay. This is my previous uh, mini second gen. I have flash modded also to 128 gigs. Um, and then I have this blue one that I want to flash mod as well. Like why wouldn't you flash mod it? I don't know. And I got the silver one. Um, I bought from somebody for like five bucks locally. So that was a sweet deal there. But yeah, I got this guy here loaded up with 509 songs. This is also 128 and I still have 115 gigs available. This can hold a ridiculous amount of music. Like, I don't know, it's it's gnarly. It's definitely not mini for 2020. It's a little chunky, but if you enjoy having your music on a separate device or you want to free up some space on your phone or you don't have streaming services or you own a bunch of CDs, whatever the reason, I would recommend an iPod mini. They're fairly easy to flash mod. Um, it's fun, it's nostalgic. These are from what, like 2005, 2006-ish era. You can get them in a butt ton of different colors. So it's a nice little fun project. You're, it's, it's one of a kind, freaking get one. It's beautiful. So um, that pretty much concludes it. Here are some very nice cinematic shots of the iPod. Um, in its glory with a little bit of scuffs here and there. But then again, it's pretty hard to come across a mint condition one of these for a good deal. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully, um, if you're flash modding your iPod, you learned a little bit from me or enjoyed watching this. Um, if you guys wanna see more iPod videos, more mod videos, more tech videos, whatever, feel free to subscribe. Um, leave a mention in the comments what you'd love to see next. Um, love feedback on what you thought about the video. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.